By 1997, he had morphed into an intelligent design proponent, and he was one of the early fellows of the Center for the Renewal of Science and Culture, which is now the Center for Science and Culture. And of course, in 2000, in an interview, he actually says that scientific creationism, which in its modern phase began in the early 1960s, is actually one of the intellectual antecedents of the intelligent design movement. Now, you would think they write all this stuff, and I guess they think nobody's... Well, I guess it's true there are very few people who, like, you know, crazy philosophers in Louisiana who are going to sit in behind a computer for thousands of hours and dig this stuff up. But uh, I guess they thought they could write it and nobody but their followers would read it while I read it. Uh, and you can... <laughs> So you can, you can see the, the morphing of the movement in this one man, um, and we brought that out to the judge. And uh, Kenyon's very reclusive. It was very hard even to find that picture. Um, so now what about pandas? Um, the, we wanted to see if there was something that would really clinch the deal on pandas. Uh, pandas is an intelligent design creationist book, uh, and the Discovery Institute, of course, denies that it's a creationist book. Um, in the archives at the NCSC, one of the um, staff there found a little clipping in a student creationist newspaper in which um, Charles Thaxton, one of the, the Discovery Institute creationists, was advertising for someone to, to come in as a, to help write a creationist book uh, that would present both creation and evolution. And that tiny little clipping um, tipped, tipped off uh, the attorneys that there might be some, that might have been the beginning of pandas, and there might be early drafts. And so they subpoenaed the Foundation for Thought and Ethics to produce all documents connected with that book. And so I have 7,000 pages of confidential documents in my office, which is what we got. Um, and it turned out that there were five, they had kept all of the drafts. Uh, they didn't shred anything, uh, they kept everything. Um, and so there were at least five drafts. One is 1983, the Creation Biology Textbook Supplement. 1986, Biology and Creation, Field Test Copy. 1987, Biology and Origins. 1987, renamed of pandas and people. Now, this is the creationist version. What marks all of these drafts is that they were written in overtly creationist language. Creationist creationism, creation biology. Um, all of those, all of the cognates of that term were in the text. Um, but we had a second 1987 version that had been cleansed of that terminology. And it turns out that, in other words, instead of saying creation science or creationism, they're saying intelligent design, design proponents, blah, blah, blah. So that's, that was a, a huge thing. That was a huge thing that we, we found. And notice, this is 1987. Remember what came down in 1987? Edwards versus Aguilar in June, on June 19th. And what I found was a note in the introduction of the 1987 versions referencing Edwards, indicating that they had taken account of it. So what we did was to make a timeline for the judge showing him uh, the, the 1987 version, the first of Pandas and People, is written in creationist language. In fact, creation is defined, and this is very important, you'll see why, as the be abrupt beginning of life, that life began abruptly and animals were fully formed with all of their features intact, fins and feathers and all of that. Uh, and then the, the second 1987 version, after the Edwards decision came down, you see uh, Edwards at the top there, you see the case there on the timeline. Um, that's where we see intelligent design language substituted, and then that's the way it's published in 1993. So what, what we found was that creation was defined exactly the same way in every single draft, but in the 1987, the second draft, the post-Edwards draft, for creation was substituted intelligent design. That was the only change in the definition at all. That was the only change. And I was actually sitting in my office one day going through uh, some of those drafts, and I, I found there uh, one of them. Now, this is not one we used in court, ironically, but the word creationist, what they had done, they'd switched over from typewriters in the 83 version to um, uh, word processors in the late 80s when we all started getting computers and stuff, you know. Um, and they w went into the, the draft the, and, and were doing a search and replace. And uh, somebody, may, maybe they hadn't had enough coffee or something because um, in one of them, this is what I found. <laughs> So I, I immediately called the National Center for Science Education and told them, and they went and looked in their draft, and they were the ones who dubbed it the missing link. I mean, that's just, 
I, along with the birth of my two sons, it's one of life's great moments for me. Uh, so it was really a, and we didn't even use this in court. I mean, <laughs> can you imagine? Uh, all right. So anyway, um, our uh, resident uh, uh, geeks at the NCSC uh, got one of the, the, the raw drafts of the, of the their company had uh, the law firm had hired a company to uh, scan the text of pandas and just put it in ASCII ASCII text which is unformatted and so the our um, uh, staff at NCSC did a, a word count of the the, uh, the the use of the term creationism and all the cognates in the the, the, the pre Edwards version and that's represented by the one the, the red line. And there we have Pandas version 2, and where they had substituted the intelligent design language. Now you see that the, the use of creationism language is very high in the early version, and the references to design are very low. Well, this is what happened in the, the 1987 post-Edwards version. This is, you know, and, it, and, and we use this as one of the graphics that we used. If you want this, it's, it's not exactly like this. It doesn't have the little pop-up things, but it's on my website, and you can get this for yourself if you want it. So this is, this is what um, Nick Matsky, uh, at, uh, one of our staff at NCIC, called the smoking gun. So needless to say, we won this case. And, um, and those are our plaintiffs, our wonderful plaintiffs. Along. I couldn't be up there at the time, but when, the, when they were there waiting, they knew when the, when the ruling was due, and they were all up there at the law office in Harrisburg waiting, and they, it was a wonderful moment for them. Uh, and it was actually kind of poignant, because this had ripped their little community apart. It's a very small town. Uh, but we did win, thanks to a wonderful judge who was appointed by George W. Bush in 2002. Uh, yes, um, who who disappointed his his uh, who have now people who have become his political detractors and uh, literally abided by the Constitution. Um, and the Discovery Institute responses were interesting. Uh, Dembski's was appropriate and very consistent. He says they were going to be raising a lot more money now because it was going to galvanize the Christian community. And John West, who has taken a major profile at the Discovery Institute um, uh, with them now, has uh, accused the judge of being an activist with delusions of grandeur. And indeed, the judge uh, received threats. He had to be. He and his family were under armed guard over the Christmas holidays after. Um, after he handed down his opinion. The federal marshals were concerned enough to put him and his family under armed guard for a little bit. Uh, but Dembski was very well uh, remunerated. Um, this is what he got out of the deal, um, which was a lot more than I got, which was expenses, uh, which was all I, I agreed to do this pro bono. Our side did everything pro bono. The lawyers didn't get paid. All they did was charge for the, the heart. They wrote off two-thirds of the cost of this trial, and they, they, they only charged the Dover School Board what they had to charge to pay the hard costs of the trial, and the, the board had to pay a million dollars out of pocket, out of current operating funds. Um, but it, it, the thing was, it was the new board. It was the good guys who had taken the board in the November 8th election. They were the ones, not the ones who started the trouble, but they're the ones who had to pay the bill. Okay. Um, and so uh, Dembski, being his typical self, has really been uh, nasty about the judge. You can see, if you know what putz means, I will not explain it, but ask somebody who speaks Yiddish and they'll tell you what it means. Um, and he's been quite nasty about the judge, which is pretty typical. But the judge, of course, had the last laugh uh, when he declared that it, this was unconstitutional and that the opinion speaks for itself when he was interviewed um, just a couple of months after he handed down his... But it's not over. It's not over. There's a little bit more. Um, I've found even more recently evidence to show, m more, more, to show that intelligent design comes directly out of earlier creationism. This is Norman Geisler, um, who is a creationist of old. Um, and I think he's an old earther, actually. But he is a very well-known creationist, who in 1982 used the term complex specified information, which is supposedly William Dembski's signature contribution to intelligent design. There you see Dembski using exactly the same phrase in 1998. So this is, this is more missing link. I mean, this is a, a transitional fossil here, I guess you would call it. And even uh, Behe, you know, Behe didn't dream up irreducible complexity. It's been around for a long time. There you have Ariel Roth, the creationist who testified in the Arkansas McLean versus Arkansas case in 1981, talking about complex integrated structures, right, in which all the, the parts, he was talking about things like the respiratory system, uh, in which, you know, if all the parts are not there, the system won't function. Well, what Behe did in his concept of irreducible complexity is just drop that down to the subcellular level. Uh, it's exactly the same co um, concept, but he's just adapted it to, you know, one of the newer areas of science.